One of the things I like to focus on in calculus is not just absolute change or absolute rate of change, which is what the derivative talks about, but relative change. And this is just a little introduction to why relative change would be important and maybe a tiny bit of calculation uh, with relating it to calculus. So the example we looked at in class, didn't have a lot of time, but it's continuing that, is here's the population of Albuquerque from uh, sampled every 10 years in thousands of people uh, from 1950 to 2010. And um, I wanted to, I want to know, I want to compare two growth rates. How fast was the city growing in 1960 when it was a, a post-war boom town? And how fast was it growing in 2000 when it was still growing pretty fast, but it was a sort of a, a mature, uh, much larger city? And if we want to get the approximate growth rate in 1960, well, there's nothing we can do. We can't do functions. We can't do uh, add 0.001 or anything like that. There's no formulas or anything. We have to just go for the data. And we saw that the best way to do that, absent any other kind of thing we can um, to know, is to bracket this value. And so if so, one of the people in seventh period complained that if this is the endpoint, they weren't really sure about getting a very good, accurate value. So I went back and found the data from 1950, um, and then I changed it to 2000 instead of 2010. So here we're able to bracket this value. It's not actually a, a big deal, but that helps. Um, and so we take 245,000 minus 97,000 people divided by the 20 years in the interval. We get 7.4 thousand people per year. And so that is an approximate, um, in other words, it's a pro an approximation to the derivative P prime at 1960. Remember, we did this long, long ago. This was the, the, the slope of a secant line. It's, a approximate, it's an overall rate of change. It's our best approximation to the slope of the tangent line, which would be P prime in 1960. And our best approximation to uh, P prime of 2000 is this bracketing, 546 minus 385 over 20. That's 8.05 thousand persons per year. And the question is, was Albuquerque growing faster in 2000 than in 1960? And I heard some conversations about, and one of the thing was, it depends on how you look at it. We didn't get to explore that, but that's a great answer to almost any question. <laughs> If we just measure it by comparing the P primes, the slopes of the tangent line, then we get uh, 2,000 is growing slightly faster. But if we look at it as a percentage of the population, this was 7,400 7, people per year, each year adding, coming, sort of moving to the city, out of 200,000. Here it's a slightly bigger number, 8,050 people, but out of a much bigger number. 449,000, okay? And so um, when, another question I asked, when was the Chamber of Commerce happier? Well, they're probably happier when the proportional growth rate is higher. It's not hard for a huge city to absorb more people, and it's not as meaningful a growth. For example, if this were um, Shanghai right now, if you told me that the population of Shanghai was growing by only 8,000 people a year, I'd say, that's, that's ridiculous. It's got to be bigger than that, because I know Shanghai is a huge city. Okay? So I'd say probably in 1960. They like a big proportional rate of growth, or in other words, the relative rate of change. Okay. And so what is that? Well, let's see. Let's just have some terminology. The absolute change in a quantity. That's going to be just like delta P, which, for example, would be like this P of 1970 minus P of, um, oops, P of 1950. That was the um, 148,000 people. That's an absolute change in a quantity. Just subtract two values of the quantity, like del the delta P. Okay, Relative change, that is take the delta P and divide it by P. So that is going to be that 148,000 people. But then you divide it by how many people were there. Now, right in the middle of that interval is the right place to take for this, over the 201,000 people. Okay. Okay. So 
the in that 20 years between 1950 and 1970, roughly it was that much relative change. Okay, let's actually just calculate that. What do we get? It doesn't like, oh, it doesn't like the commas. Sorry. It doesn't understand commas in the math. Okay. That's uh, about 74%. Wow, that's a big change. In 20 years, we added 74% of the population. Okay, And I'm taking it out of the 201 because that's really it's right in the middle of this interval. It's probably better than taking either of these endpoint values. With derivatives, that those issues totally go away, by the way. Okay, So what about the relative change here? That's the relative change around 1960. And the relative change around 2000 would again be that'd be a different value of delta p over p. That's going to be a hundred and sixty-one thousand people. I'll just do it in thousands of people. They're both in thousands. Divided by the four forty-nine. That's around the two thousand value. That is. Come on. That's only about thirty-six percent. Okay. So that's an absolute change or a relative change. Do you divide by the quantity or not? Okay. Well, what about rates of change? Whoa, I didn't mean to caps lock it there. Rates of change, I really, okay, there we go. Okay, well, that's things like delta P over delta T. That's an absolute rate of change. Let me put that in absolute rate of change is if you have have to work with secant lines and approximations that's the kind of calculation we were doing here so that was the thing exactly this calculation 7.4 thousand persons per year or 8.05 thousands persons per year okay and that leads to the derivative okay when we take the limit when we look at the tangent slope instead of the secant slope we're used to that we're getting real good at that okay what about the relative rate of change I claim that's just really, that's just as important. Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to take that same quantity. Ooh, that didn't work. Okay. Delta P over delta T, and we're going to divide it by P. Now, so this is not to overload the denominator. I'm going to put that in front. Okay. So let's calculate that here. Um, I, I pretty much already got it. I already took the difference in the number of people, I actually divided it by p already, that's 74%. And then I just need to divide it by the delta t as well to get a rate of change. So 74% over 20 years, that's going to be 3.7% uh, okay, per year. And that's the kind of, of uh, unit we'd expect for a relative rate of change percent per year makes sense because the percent is a very common way to express this relative value. You don't have to. You could say 0.74, but it's common to say 74%. And then per year is because you're also dividing by delta T. Okay, So that's in 1960, whereas in 2000, what can we do? Well, we have this 36%, but that happened over 20 years. And so now we're going to divide that. That's only 1.8%. Okay. And so that says that in terms of relative rate of change, it was twice as fast in 1960 as in 2000. And that's a very, very relevant thing. So in terms of proportional growth, there was a, a big slowdown in 2000. Thank goodness, or else the city would be way too big. Okay. So what about, um, how about a connection with the formulas? This is going back to old school rates of change where we just had data and we just really were doing secant, cal secant line calculations. What about the connection with the formulas? Well, let's just look at like a really simple function. f of x equals x squared. Let's graph that real quick. Um, and think about the, how the slopes change. So like comparing the slope here at 1 to the slope out here at like 4, we can see the slope is getting bigger. But the function's getting bigger too. If this was the population curve for some city, would this be something where the growth rate is actually getting faster? 
for the relative growth rate, getting faster or getting slower? OK, well, let's just do a couple calculations. The relative growth rate, uh, I don't need math. Really. The relative growth rate at, let's say, x equals 1. OK, well, what do we do? Instead of taking delta p over delta t, we're actually going to go to the derivative now. Okay, the absolute growth rate, the absolute rate of change of this function would be f prime of x. But then what do we need to divide by? f of x. We're going to take the slope of the tangent line, that's a rate of growth, but then we're going to divide by how high it is. So it's really a slope over height, which sounds a little weird, I think, when you first say it, but it's really exactly what you want to do. That's exactly what we were doing with the population graph, the population data, really. Okay. Well, we know how to do that. That's 2x. God, why is it not paying attention to my control key? Over x squared. Ooh, that simplifies. That's 2 over x. And so at x equals 1, that's going to be 2. So at x equals 1, let me, let me actually make this um, equal scaling to see this a little clearer. OK. So at x equals 1, the slope is 2. It's not a huge slope, but it's, it's moderately steep. It's more than 1, OK? Um, and the height is 1. And so the ratio is 2, OK? Well, let's see. What about at x equals 4? Almost the same calculation. We've really got a general formula going here. But now we're going to be taking this, and we're going to be putting in 4. Ooh, that's one half. I don't think that's an obvious fact, but the yes, the the slope is higher here. It's a steeper curve, but as a proportion of this, the value is four goes up to sixteen right here. As a proportion of how high it is, it's actually not that that strong. This kind of function, a parabolic function, actually loses steam in terms of proportional growth rate as it goes up. And so notice what we're all we're having to do here is we're just taking the derivative. And we're dividing by the function itself. It's not a hard calculation, um, but it's not something most books talk about. Um, what about, is there some function where this growth rate, f prime of x over f of x, is a constant? Constant. In other words, proportional relative rate of growth. I claim that you have seen that. I, I know you've seen that. If you're taking a calculus course, if you've ever took pre-calculus, and I know my students have seen this, something where the relative rate of growth is constant. Well, what, ha what, what, what happens like with population? Does this ever happen? Well, it does if the fertility of the population is the same. If at any point, the sort of the same per percentage of, of the population is having babies, for example, or if the same percentage of bacteria in the same amount of time is producing new bacteria. And what does that lead to? It leads to exponential growth. And in fact, we already know this answer just from calculus class. In fact, we know an, an example where this is equal to 1. What is the function where f prime of x over f of x is equal to 1. In other words, it's a function where f prime of x is equal to f of x. Hey, yeah, we found that. e to the x. f of x is e to the x. So the exponential function, the fact that it's its own derivative, means that its proportional growth rate is exactly equal to the simplest non-zero number ever. That's one of the big important reasons why e to the x comes up. That's why it models exponential growth, precisely because it has this constant relative growth rate. We're going to get some interesting consequences out of looking at f prime over f, but that's a good intro.